Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so I hope those alleluias are ringing from all over our parish, our city, all over the world. So even in the face of sickness and sometimes death, we can still sing Alleluia, celebrating the one whose love was greater than the grave, the forgiving servant, the suffering servant. Silently acknowledging that wherever we are, we are in the presence of God. In silence, we look into our hearts. You have freed us from the slavery of sin and brought us to the freedom of the children of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are risen, and in rising, you have brought us to eternal life. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. In your risen light, we are called to share that light with the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the 
Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, Rise up in the light of life, through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us rejoice and be glad. 
St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians praise the Paschal Victor. Offer grateful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep. Christ the just one paid the price. Reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. The Lord of life who died glorified. O oh, Mary, come and say what you saw at break of day, the empty tomb of my living Lord. I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testify, shroud and grave close side by side. Christ, my hope, rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully. His death is victory. Lord Jesus, victor king, show us mercy. 
Christ has become our Paschal sacrifice. Let us feast with joy in the Lord. The Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On that first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are still the Easter people, and still, in spite of all adversity and suffering and sometimes death, we are the Easter people, and we can sing through our tears because we know that tears can lead to eternal, eternal life. And so we still celebrate this most important feast, the most important feast in the church. And at this time in Texas, every year in Texas, my mind goes back to England, to the place where I was born, right in the middle, sandwiched between Birmingham and Shropshire, close to four or five remains of medieval monasteries festooned with churches dating back seven, eight, or nine hundred years. And I remember my home. I used to walk to my home up a wonderful lane called Limekiln, with beautiful fields and hedgerows on one side, an elementary playing field on the other. And at this time of the year, it would be bursting with flowers, very much like the way in which parts of Camp Logan and this area are bursting with white flowers and wonderful smells. But it was my garden that I loved most of all. Flowers that bloomed at various times of the year. Apple trees, rhubarb, gooseberries that Texans have never heard of. And I'm not quite sure how to describe them. But it was a place that was always alive at this time of the year with an abundance of gold and yellow daffodils. 
I know I've told you, I've read this to you before, but it is Easter. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high all vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside a lake, beside the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. They don't do very well in Texas. But I always associate the burst of color after the grayness of winter with daffodils and the advent of spring. And gardens, as we know, are extremely important in our scriptures. Dating back to the time the story was told of a place called Eden and all that happened therein. And we hear only a few days ago of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, a place immortalized to this day by intense prayer, sweating of blood, unsupported friends, and perhaps the most costly kiss in history of betrayal and arrest. It's still a place that evokes great emotion. When I was there two years ago, with a group from the parish and from our, with our principal. She read at the church at the side of this garden and as she proclaimed the scriptures, she was overwhelmed. And we do well to be overwhelmed as we celebrate this feast, a love that's stronger than death. Another garden is also mentioned, but not named. The one in which contained the grave of Jesus that Larry just proclaimed to us from John's Gospel. Again, perhaps the most famous grave in history. But we're told a solitary woman went to the grave and was shocked, was saddened, distraught, as any of us would be if the body of somebody we loved and had died, was not to be found. And she went, ran to his friends, Simon Peter and John, the beloved disciple. And although John arrived first, it was the impetuous one, Simon Peter, who entered the grave, followed a little more tentatively by the beloved disciple, John. And we're told in that gospel that Deacon Larry proclaimed, that John saw and he believed. He saw and he believed. And we know that their lives were changed from that moment onwards. This year we won't hear what happened to Mary of Magdala, who first witnessed the empty tomb. It won't be read in our churches publicly on a Sunday. But it's good to remind you, outside in the garden, still distressed. She sees a gardener. She asks a question. Where have they put him? Her beloved friend, her beloved teacher. He speaks her name. He says, Mary. In a calling of her name, she recognizes him as her savior. She recognizes him as the one first raised from the dead. And the gospel that we just heard talks about things that cannot be understood. Jeffrey Preston, a deceased Dominican, in the opening line of an Easter homily over 40 years ago, said the first thing to be said about the resurrection that we, that we shall never understand it. Now, that's a man who lives by the motto, veritas, truth. So we're living at a time when we don't understand either. Be assured, we're in good company. He goes on to say, it's not until we see Easter, this feast of mystery, as being completed and whole, will we celebrate Ascension and Pentecost. 
Books are still written about who moved the stone. We're still celebrating the mystery of love that's more powerful than a grave. We celebrate the forgiving victim, another name for Jesus, in whose name we gather throughout our parish, in many and varied homes, many people, I hope, joining in to celebrate with us the faith that we so desperately need at this time and that we see being li lived out so beautifully, so courageously by so many of our medics. And for that I rejoice, and for them I sing, Alleluia. It is the beginning of the season of Advent. Sorry, not Advent, but Easter. A celebration that can't be contained in one day, and that since that first Easter spilled out into all life. And so we're celebrating as a church, each in our own homes, deeply respectful, deeply concerned about not sharing or spreading the virus, wanting people to be as healthy as they can be. And that's why I rejoice that we can celebrate with the, with the advent of so much technology that makes it possible. And to conclude, like Mary of Magdala, whose name was called in that garden, I hope that each of us acknowledge that our name is called by the one God who made us all, and the God revealed in Jesus Christ, who faced death, the forgiving victim. And that we, this day, this season of Easter, this time, the challenge, that we too know we love, we too are loved, because our names too are called by God. Happy Easter. Dear friends, let us humbly beseech our Lord and God to bless this water which God has created, which will be sprinkled upon us and throughout our parish as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord God, in your mercy we present to your people who celebrate this Easter Sunday Mass and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still the greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made the water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in a bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who will hopefully be baptized through sometime throughout the Easter season. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, 
by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in a holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin? I do. Do you renounce it so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have mastery over you no more? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give God glory and praise forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give God glory and praise forever. Oceans of mercy, glory to God. Praise to the one who formed you. Sound from the depths of in thy tongues. The wondrous works of God, a blessing be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give God glory and praise forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give God glory and praise forever. Father, on this day our eyes and hearts are raised to the risen Lord. Let us pray that his glory may fill our world, especially in those places where darkness and sickness remain. For Pope Francis, that rejoicing anew he may shepherd the church to greater unity with all who bear the name of Christian, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened by caring for others, especially in these COVID-19 days, that they may be strengthened to continue to serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the marginalized, the rejected, the imprisoned, the trafficked, and the addicted, that in each we may see the dignity of he who is now risen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, that we may be inspired in this Easter season to take special care of our common home, the earth and its environment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For our catechumens and candidates who long to be baptized and received into the church, that their hunger for Christ and his body, the church, may be satisfied soon, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot physically gather for this Easter celebration, that each household may be renewed and bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those with COVID-19 whose names are not known to us, the physically and emotionally ill, the homebound, the elder, elderly, and the vulnerable, that their sorrow may be turned to joy through the healing touch of the risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For all who have gone before us in death, our recently deceased parish and family members, and those who have died from COVID-19, that they might know the light and joy of the resurrection this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, for this season of joy, for the invitation to the fullness of life, for a deepening of our faith in your presence, we praise you through Jesus, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for continuing to support our work and our ministry here at St. Teresa. And thank you. Be assured of our prayers and the continued work of this parish on behalf of those most in need. And for your generosity, I thank you. love can do. This is the day of new beginnings. My God is making all things new. My God is making all things new. This is the day of new beginnings. Time to remember and revive. Time to believe what love is bringing. Laying to rest the pain that's gone. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is the day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Our God is making all things new. For by the life and death of Jesus, love's mighty spirit now as then can make for us a world of difference, and faith and hope are born again. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share the love can do. This is the day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Our God is making all things new. Let's pray, my sisters and brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice that your hands in the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrous, wondrous, wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, and Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit on them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, George, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen.
He's restored us. And with confidence we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, though I say the word, and my soul shall be If you 
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favour, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. And of course, the oneness that we rejoice in, the oneness that goes beyond church walls, is not because of technology, because it's of the Spirit of God that renews all things and all creation. So in Him we are one, wherever we are. And to all of you, again, Alleluia. Happy Easter. Go forth. The Mass is ending. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, no. 